by way of quick introduction, my name is Nora. I'm on the product marketing team here at Clary, and I'll be your host for today. Just while we give it a few more minutes for folks to join us, I'll quickly go over a couple of housekeeping items. This webinar, it will be recorded and we'll share that recording with you later today. We'll also be pinning some resources in the chat right now. So if you're looking for even more information after this webinar, that link will be a really good place to start. And then speaking of the chat, any questions that you have throughout the webinar, feel free to throw them in the chat. We'll either answer them directly there or we'll save them to answer live during our Q&A section. And then the last thing I'll mention is our poll. That will show up in your chat as well. Responses are completely anonymous, so be sure to participate when you see that go up. For those that just joined, welcome to today's webinar. We have a lot of great stuff in store for you, all focused around revenue analytics and how to drive an accurate forecast. I have with me here today our two amazing speakers, Bobby Brenman, who's our VP of Product Marketing at Clary, and then Mike Warren, Zoom's Go-To-Market Insights Manager. So you're in really good hands today here with the team. In terms of content, we'll kick things off with a brief overview of Clary's revenue analytics. Some of you may have joined us today after our recent analytics launch, so we have just a quick update there. Then we'll spend the majority of our time getting to hear from Mike and learning how he's driving the forecast process for Zoom. And then lastly, we have some time set aside to answer your questions. So just don't forget to pop those in the chat as they come up. But with that being said, I'll turn it over to you, Bobby, to get us started. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nora. Um, as mentioned, my name is Bobby Brenman. I lead our product marketing team here at Clary, which means I get to work with our amazing customers day in, day out, helping them with their revenue process, helping to make sure that our product is continuing to deliver and meet these needs. I'm thrilled to be joined by Mike and all of you here today to talk about really how world-class organizations use Clary's purpose-built analytics to run their revenue process. We here at Clary understand that revenue is a process that you drive every day. It's not just an outcome at the end of the quarter and, and the way that a lot of teams have approached it historically. Um, and we're on a mission to really make sure that we can surface those critical business insights about that process all in one place. So every quarter we release tons of new features and functionality, and I'm sure many of you are here today because you saw the most recent announcement about analytics, but I wanna just take a step back just to share with some of you about how we approach innovation and really think about customer-driven innovation. We have the wonderful privilege of having four, over 400 world-class organizations that rely on Clary every day to run the revenue process. So the insights that we get from folks like Mike, who we're joined with today, as well as, as hundreds of other organizations, combined with our professional services teams, our account teams, our customer success teams, not only help us leverage world-class technology for our customers, but also hopefully help our customers with the support the best practices that are required to really transform ever-changing and complex revenue process. For anyone that's not familiar with, with Clary, I'll do a super high-level overview, and then I want to make sure we can turn over to Mike to dive into a lot of the details. So today we're talking about our analytics that are, that are purpose-built for revenue. But if you're familiar with Clary, we do a lot more than that. We do everything from helping organizations dive deep into their pipeline, look at their, their opportunity grids, get dashboard roll-up views that are highly customizable so that you can run your rhythm of the business. And I know Mike's going to talk about some, some of these elements today. But the key thing we want to really drill into to right now is about how Clary helps organizations answer those complex questions that revenue leaders, all the way from executives down to individual reps, have to ask themselves every day to make sure that they're driving revenue in this world that we live in, which is highly complex, ever evolving, um, ever, ever changing. So today we're going to talk about um, the different analytics modules, as well as our newest anal addition to analytics modules, which is Waterfall. And we'll talk a little bit about, about Funnel, which is upcoming. So for folks that aren't super familiar, just to give a, a very, very high level overview, we have, you know, we have four analytics modules today. Trend is, is provides you the point in time detailed forecast projections of where the teams are. So you really get that forward look and can answer the questions of where are we going to be at the end of the quarter? Our customers use flow to really answer that question of how are deals progressing throughout the quarter? And do you have that visibility into, into where, where deals are moving? Pulse, and Mike's going to talk about this in a, in a lot more detail, but when you want to really understand how is the quarter progressing week by week and how can I drill in region by region, rep by rep, right? Getting that level of detail to really understand how or what, what is happening in my business and answer those questions so you can make those real-time adjustments and changes to strategy. 
And then Waterfall, which is our, our newest addition to the analytics suite, really helps organizations identify the factors that impact the pipeline between any two points in time. As we were talking to customers such as such as Mike and, and Zoom during our early access programs, as well as talking to our revenue leaders here at, at Clary, you know, they shared stories about how they can now look back to the past seven days and see exactly where the changes are in terms of all of their pipeline, what's moved in, what's moved out, what's really changed. So they can have that view of the business between any two points in time. And not only that, but they can then drill in and use the rest of Clary's platform to click into any one of these bar charts and then actually make the real-time updates, make the adjustments, understand the individual reps that are involved in the deals and have those coaching conversations. So thrilled to uh, to go into detail on this. I'm not gonna talk a lot about Funnel. This is gonna be coming up uh, very soon, but really hoping to show organizations how conversion rates change over time. And you'll see this coming out in the next quarter or so fr from us. And we'll, we'll update um, everyone as that, as that happens. So with that, I wanted to turn over to Mike Warren. We're, we're thrilled to be, be joined by Mike and his team who you know we worked with for for, for a long time with with uh, with, with Clary, and um, I hope everyone on this call is uh, deeply familiar with Zoom at this point, especially where we are. But Mike, let me turn it over to you, and uh, thrilled to see how how you and the team are, are relying on Clary day to day. Yeah, appreciate it, Bobby. Uh, so grateful to be here and have this opportunity. Uh, my name is Mike Warren. I'm a GTM Insights Manager with Zoom Video Communications, and. My role here is really centered around driving our global forecast. So uh, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart and very important to me. Um, and, and for those of you who are perhaps unfamiliar with Zoom, uh, we are an all-in-one uh, communications platform. We are a Gardner recognized leader in UCAS globally, and we really try to do it all with you and our users in mind. Uh, we meet happy shameless plug check us out hit the subscribe link down below whatever the kids do these days <laughs> uh, but anyway i've been with zoom for about four years now so not quite uh from the start of it all but long enough to have really had the privilege to go through two of our big milestones and and one is you know going public with our ipo back in 2019 and then two of course uh, was just really navigating our way through COVID and and really the huge growth we saw as a company over the last year or so. And, and for context, I think, um, you know, reported revenue during that first year of going public was like 150 million. And we're guiding that for this year to like 4 billion. So it's been an extreme amount of, of growth. Um, and I bring this up really for no other reason than to just say uh, forecast accuracy is tough. Uh, it's tough in general. It's tough when you're going through an IPO. It's tough when you're going through an unprecedented growth like we did. Um, and I'd love to say that there's this magic formula that exists that can help us all, but but sadly there isn't. Uh, and in fact, uh, side note, I used to love to do this little bit um, uh, when I was out giving talks and I would start off my presentations uh, and I would, I would uh, uh, tease everybody and say, okay, uh, under one of your chairs, I've hidden the secret to accurate forecasting. And it was great. Everyone would frantically get up, look under their chairs for this magic piece of paper that of course didn't exist. And um, people got really mad at me and some chairs got broken and uh, actually it probably wasn't that great of a bit. But the fact is, um, uh, there is no secret. It's really tough. Um, but there are a few things that we've learned to where you can stay accurate. And uh, what I learned, what we learned through Zoom, through the IPO, through the COVID boom, is that really accurate forecasting boils down to three main pillars. Um, and I call those the three Ps, uh, perspective, process, and platform. And so what I what I mean by perspective is that it really boils down to the fact that you just can't rely on one person, one source to provide an accurate forecast. Um, the truth of the matter is there are just so many variables out there that impact the forecast that, you know, one person, one source isn't going to accurately capture all of them. So uh, when I look back at when I first joined Zoom, this was, you know, pre IPO days our forecast was nothing more than kind of a group of our leaders sitting in a conference room, 
going around asking each other, hey, are you still good on your number? And of course, the answer was always like, yeah, of course, we got this. Um, and so there, were, there really was no data. There was no questioning the numbers. There was no other input. Uh, we were really just relying on one person um, and what they were seeing. And it quickly became clear to us, uh, you need input, you need metrics, and you need perspective from other, other people, other sources, in order to triangulate a, an accurate forecast. Uh, the second thing we learned was process. Uh, it became apparent in those early years that, you know, a weekly roundtable of commits just isn't going to do it. Um, and we needed to align around a regular process. And that included gathering perspectives from other teams. And it, it uh, included looking at metrics. And it, it allowed us to regularly start reviewing our pipeline, reviewing our forecast, reviewing the metrics and KPIs we've set. Uh, all across the org. So um, building that routine was really uh, critical to our success and something that we're still honing to this day as we continue to grow and expand. Uh, you know, and finally, the last thing we learned was just having the right platform. Uh, in those early years, there were a lot of spreadsheets uh, and various tools being used by different teams and groups. And, you know, not everyone had access to the spreadsheets. Uh, they were all in different formats. Um, a lot of the data was just stale and being manually updated. So uh, it made putting together kind of a comprehensive view of our forecast really difficult. And it often didn't paint the full picture. So uh, it became clear we needed to sort of all center and align around um, one platform. And for us, that, that platform was, was Clary. So let's jump into perspective. Um, what I mean about perspective um, is that, you know, when I, uh, when I look back again on those early days of Zoom and those conference forecast calls, uh, we were relying on the perspective of our AEs and managers to roll up this number. They knew the deals, you know, they were living in them day to day. But what we quickly learned was they really didn't know the deals and we were kind of only hearing what they wanted us to hear. Uh, so what we needed were some ways to really pressure test the numbers that they were throwing out there. And so we started digging into the numbers and we started to establish some metrics and we started looking at historical conversion rates. Um, we started looking at past performance. We really started to leverage the AI and the projections that were coming out of Clary. And we started looking more closely at our deal level insights. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, uh, what our managers and reps were calling out, we could suddenly, uh, you know, validate or invalidate them really by triangulating these numbers against all these other measures. And, you know, Clary makes it so easy to do that because, um, it gives all of these great measures for us to look at, all the history is there. Um, so it's really been a godsend for us. And, you know, uh, some of the ways that we use Clary to expand our perspective. Um, first, we love that we, uh, we absolutely love the fact that we can share our forecasts. Um, and this feature has been amazing for the simple fact that we know that the selling motion isn't always just a rep doing their own thing. You know, oftentimes it involves our SEs, our product specialists, our CSM, inside sales, um, you name it. And so um, now we're getting to the point where we're actually getting all these teams to roll up their own forecasts based on the deals that they're involved in. And by sharing these forecasts with, with sales and all the groups, you know, we're able to compare and identify differences in the numbers, which, which ultimately helps us land on a, on a tighter commit. Um, one other, one of the other analytic modules we absolutely love at, uh, at Zoom is Flow. And uh, at Zoom, you know, we generate a lot of opportunities and, and what Flow helps us do is really better understand what's happening to those opportunities between any given time. So um, if we're looking at Flow, you know, a lot, some of the key metrics that we like to look at are, um, you know, how much pipe are we walking into a quarter with? Uh, how much new pipe are we creating in, in the quarter? What's getting slipped out? Um, how are we converting our, our new pipe um, that we create versus the pipe that we walk into a quarter with? 
Um, understanding all these things are really critical in, um, in figuring out, uh, A, where you're uh, forecasting for the rest of the quarter and, and expect it to land. But just um, you start to be able to develop these trends and you start to understand your slippage rates. You start to understand your conversion rates and you start to understand the amount of new pipe that your teams are creating. And so for for our up market, uh, where our where our deals are a little bit longer, they're a little bit bigger, a little bit more complex. Um, you know, it's important for us to to keep a keep an eye on those starting pipe conversions because we know the pipe that they create in the quarter, it's probably not going to close in that quarter. So we start to track that over time. And alternatively, you know, if we're looking at our SMB business, these are smaller deals with quicker turnaround. Um, you know, they rely a lot more on that new pipe that they're creating in quarter. And so keeping an eye on what they're creating, keeping an eye on how they're converting it and those conversion rates is, is also really important for them. And pretty soon with the combination of all these things, um, you know, new pipe created versus uh, what's expected in the, from historicals and uh, knowing what they typically convert, uh, it's easy for a team or a rep or a manager to to see. Okay, am am I in a gap? Am I in a deficit? Do I need to create more? Knowing that I'm going to convert, you know, seventy percent or whatever it is, uh, and so that helps them identify kind of how they need to um, change or behave in, uh, for the rest of that quarter. Um, and so flow is awesome. It, it really helps us, um, you know, answer a lot of these questions and it's a powerful tool when used, uh, in all these different ways. But, um, one other feature we really love, uh, about Clo uh, flow is that we're able to add filters in there. And one filter that we love to add at zoom is lead source. Um, and lead source is awesome because, we're now able to look at our pipe um, and understand what's feeding it. Uh, and we can understand like how we're converting from those different sources. So um, by adding that in there, we're able to see how we convert opportunities coming from inbound leads versus outbound leads versus channel. And, you know, because our marketing and channel teams are also using Clary, uh, we can all kind of align around these numbers and it really just, uh, brings attention to areas or trends that, you know, may need to be addressed so we can jointly uh, work on those. Mike, and you're going to touch on this a little bit later as well, but, but mm -hmm. how often are your teams having that conversation and really checking back in on, on, on flow or any of these different analytics modules to, to adjust in real time? Flow is, uh, we definitely use flow a lot at the start um, of each month and quarter. And the reason um, we do it at those times is uh, flow is giving you kind of that, that bigger picture of what happened during a, a specific period. And so um, walking into a quarter, like I said earlier, uh, a team can see kind of, okay, here's, here's what I walked into. Here's what I'm walking into this quarter with. Here's what I walked in last quarter with. Um, I know that I typically convert, you know, 30% of what I walk into the quarter with. And I know a lot of my uh, remaining uh, deals are coming from pipe that I'm creating. So if I'm, if I typically create this much, then, you know, this is kind of where I, I could potentially land knowing I convert, you know, 60% of that or ho however the math shakes out. But from doing all that, it's easy to see, okay, uh, am I, is there going to be a gap between, uh, what I'm expected to do based on previous uh, quarters or history um, and what I need to then do to, to make up that. So um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of that gets, gets done at the beginning of the month and beginning of the quarter. Awesome. A lot of great, great best practices there. Let's jump into uh, the to waterfall. I think is next. Yeah. Uh, and so like I mentioned, you know, flow is great for seeing those, those bigger picture trends, but what we found is it was always sort of a struggle to view the ins and outs of our pipe, like within the quarter that we were in. So uh, we were super excited when Waterfall launched because for us, that filled in a lot of the gaps. Um, with Waterfall, you can see exactly what happened to your pipe and you can literally walk from starting pipe to ending pipe um, by each of these buckets. And and what that does is it gives, uh, it gives a, basically visibility and attention to all of our leaders of 
big changes in the pipe and exactly which deals um, cause those. Um, and, and one of the major benefits we love is that uh, which Flow didn't have is that you can actually now see which deals increased in value and which deals decreased in value. Uh, and in some of those cases, uh, those could have a big impact on your, your overall pipeline. Um, I know for, for Zoom, for example, you know, at, in the beginning of a, of a deal cycle with maybe an enterprise customer, it could be a small amount because they don't quite know what that is. But as soon as you know that deal progresses and we get a better understanding of what that customer is interested in, you know that could become a really big deal, which could increase our pipe. So being able to pinpoint exactly what accounts and targets those are is is amazing. Um, and so we can start to at, answer questions like, you know, did uh, uh, did we lose a lot of pipe in one week? Um, if so, why? And and do we know? Um, you know, what we need to do to follow up on those accounts. So uh, Waterfall is really great for answering those. Um, and it's really extremely helpful at the end of each month and quarter too, because you can filter your pipe by, um, you know, later stages. You can filter it by deals that are in commit. And if those deals slip out, um, you know, we need to know why so that we can address them. We can follow up for a quick follow or close or, or understand, you know, um, what happened there. That's great. Yeah, I think it's one of the things we see often, and, and I know you and I talked about this a little bit, is just that ability to to not only look at the snapshot view of what's happening, but then to be able to adjust those filters and dive in and really diagnose what's happening and, and have that ability to not just answer the question, but then really act on it as a team and, and, and update. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and finally, you know, trend, we, we really love everything about Clary, but uh, and one other one that I want to touch on is trend. And trend's a great tool uh, that we leverage because, uh, for two reasons, really. One, uh, you know, trend is pulling all of that great conversion data from flow, and it really does a lot of the math for us so that we can see what we've converted from this same time in previous quarters, and it gives us an estimate of what we're going to close moving forward. So we can use this projection as a data point to kind of pressure test the own our own numbers that our managers and reps are calling. Um, and you know, if there are any big gaps, it's easy to see uh, why or start to uh, understand where sh where we should start to to uh, answer those. Um, and you know, the second way we like to use trend is that it gives us a comparison of our closed and open pipeline um, as of this same time in previous quarters. So uh, one way we like to look at it is, you know, if we're off to a slower start in the quarter than, than maybe what we would like, uh, it's great to come into trend and, and look back at previous quarters and see, okay, well, even though we're maybe at a slower start, like, do we have more pipeline today than we did previously? Because if we do, then, you know, th it might not be as bad because we could potentially close uh, that pipeline later on, uh, knowing that we're in a, a little bit better of a situation there. And so, you know, ultimately what all this boils down to is, is you need perspective and that comes through data that comes through the insights and um, it, it should also come from all the other groups in your, in your organization. And the fact that we're all in Clary looking at the same data and the same insights really helps us all to triangulate a number and, and help uh, dial in that accurate forecast. Awesome. So I think we're going to launch a quick poll as we get into the into the process section. Um, so that should be going live, I believe, in your chats now. But one of the things we see across our customers is we see different deployments of how organizations empower their 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 broader team um, and who has access to analytics. Clary gives organizations a lot of customization, a lot of ability to deploy different elements to different people. Um, but we wanted to see, you know, who is using analytics within your organization today, if you're using Clary, or if you're not using Clary, really what that looks like. And we'll come back to that. I think Mike's going to talk about how, uh, how they do that at Zoom with the, with the process there. Yeah, so um, process is sort of the other big pillar that we have. Um, and really, it's it's a biggie. Uh, it is absolutely critical that you establish sort of a well-defined and consistent forecasting 
process and cadence. Um, and it was clear when I first joined, you know, our process was limited. We were in sort of the infancy stages, still startup. So um, it was just not something that was on top of mind for our sales reps and managers. So, you know, I spent a good part of that first year at Zoom working on getting buy-in, working on creating that framework and, and really documenting how we define and look at forecasting. And, and so we started simple, you know, we established sort of a weekly cadence that, that you can see here. And uh, for us, we, we do our a worldwide forecast call with all of our sales leaders every Monday. Um, and then, you know, uh, we m use the, the middle of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, to really review our pipeline and having our team forecast calls, um, which then leaves us uh, Thursday and Friday to leave our new commits uh, that we can use for the upcoming uh, call on, on the following Monday. So uh, this established a routine for us that, that really helped us get some consistency behind forecasting. And, um, you know, Clary also makes it really easy with process um, and, and help drive that accountability. You see in forecast, in the forecast module, you have the red X's, you have the, the green check marks. So it's easy to see who's updating and who's not. Uh, and it also really makes it easy to summarize changes between the commits from week to week. So, you know, at Zoom, we, we let our managers uh, leave adjustments on their reps in the case that they may not agree with what they're calling. And so, again, Clary makes it easy to see uh, what, the, what the team roll-up is versus adjusted roll-up versus what the, what the leader or manager is, is eventually ultimately calling. So um, it just makes it really easy to stick to a process and um, get visibility into how that process is, is being followed. Um, and, and, and by the way, we, we really do uh, love the fact that you can leave notes and highly recommend that your teams leverage that as well, because uh, for folks, because we do the sharing, because um, we have all of our groups in Clary, it's easy to see uh, why a manager is maybe calling a different number than what their, their reps are calling um, and vice versa. So um you know, finally, uh, if you haven't taken advantage of the exporting function, by the way, that's amazing and highly recommend you do that. Uh, we like to export our commits um, each week. And really what that does is uh, it, it, we kind of track it on a week to week basis and it lets us measure the gaps between, you know, what our reps are calling versus our managers versus our, our leaders. And, you know, ultimately we like to see those gaps shrink as we approach month end and quarter end. And it really also gives us um, an idea of how much risk is in that commit. If, if there is a big gap, obviously that's, um, there's something we need to go figure out why and that there could be some potential um, risk there. Um, and this next slide is just an example of, of kind of how we built out our process and look at it from a, a quarterly view. Uh, I know this is a super busy slide, but um, again, it, it's the way we structured it. Each week, we sort of have a different theme that we like to focus on. Um, and they're all centered around kind of uh, different targeted KPIs and metrics. And so this is going to look different between um, each of our teams. Uh, SMB and our down market is going to have different metrics and KPIs than our up market and, um, and same with like our verticals and, and all that. But uh, the point is, you know, this helps us keep a structure and it helps define a process and it helps keep people uh, regularly look at these important things that are driving uh, their forecast and ultimately their, their success for the quarter. Uh, and, and really, and it, it helps us drive that predictable revenue is, it, that we're looking for, but with with everyone keeping uh, to this pace. Yeah, I, I know every organization kind of maintains their own 13 week cadence and what that looks like. But, you know, as, as I was looking at this one, I think it's just a, a great example of, a, of best practices and then how you can really use those meetings, facilitate those conversations, right, using a single single platform. And that's a, a good segue into platform, our third pillar. Um, and so like once the metrics are uh, and KPIs are established and once sales teams are bought in on, on the process, 
it's really important that you know you have folks looking at the same things across the organization. And so, as I mentioned, for us, that was really rallying behind Clary and expanding visibility um, into the data to turn forecasting more into a true go-to-market effort rather than just a sales call. Um, and so, you know, we drive our KDI, our KDRs, we drive our forecast calls, we drive our, our pipeline reviews all out of Clary and the ability to have live data that can be accessible for all of our teams is just so key in, um, in building accuracy and really breaking down those silos that exist between all these different groups. So um, this is kind of an example of how our forecast is, uh, is set up. Um, and it's a little unique in the sense that Zoom actually forecasts uh, bookings, which for us is a combination of, you know, bookings that come from opportunities that we win. It's a combination of um, bookings that come from online orders. Uh, and it, it's also uh, a combination of D books that come from, you know, down sales or cancellations. And uh, the fact that um, Clary allows for some flexibility in that module makes it great because uh, we can now kind of add and separate each of these buckets so that, you know, if I'm Steph Curry here, um, I see that I have 15 million in closed bookings. I know exactly where that came from. You know, 13 came from closed one opportunities. Um, I did get a little bit from just online business for about 4 million, but I'm seeing some debooks. And the fact that we have these separated makes it easy for, for Steph to, to know um, how much more to forecast for the quarter. And also he can go back and see in previous quarters what each of these buckets looked like. Um, and, you know, we also have a couple other great views um, that, that, you know, that break out our pipeline um, cr by creation, by close quarter, by lead source, by product. And uh, again, having that flexibility for our reps to see their data in these different uh, ways is, is huge. I like the all-star team you have set up there, Mike. At, uh, yeah, at yeah. But, uh, <laughs> just for, if, if it wasn't obvious, obviously these are all, you know, the, these are uh, demo screenshots that we put in just to uh, yeah. kind of show, show what Zoom is doing, but not uh, obviously real real numbers for Zoom, just to Correct. Put, put, yeah. uh, protect Zoom's investments and everything, so. I would hire Steph Curry as a <laughs> But, um, and so, yeah, each week, you know, our managers are having calls with their AEs. We're pulling in support teams, uh, which include our SEs, product teams, channel managers, sales ops. Uh, and we're, we're doing it all out of Clary, which really lends, in my opinion, to having more fruitful conversations about how the quarter is going and where we're going to land. And uh, we're looking at things such as pipeline coverage, you know, quarter to date attainment and how that compares to historical linearities. We're looking at our top deals, CRM scoring and activity. And because all of these different teams, again, have access to the same information, it just it makes it super clear to understand what challenges we have with with our top deals and accounts and um, helps us identify any red flags with with how the quarter is progressing. So. I feel like I could talk a lot more, um, but yeah, these are some of the great ways that, that we use Clary um, and we find new new and fun ways to to even improve as the days go by. So appreciate all of your hard work and the Clary uh, and all of Clary's support, really, Bobby. Awesome, thanks so much, Mike. It's it's uh, it's always like a master class talking with you on uh, on some of these topics and just seeing how Zoom is uh, is running it. So I wanted to uh, to jump to Q and A. Thank you for folks who have already started to populate some of the questions into the into the chat here. Um, and I wanted to first touch back on the poll that we that we raised. And um, I don't know if we can show the results live here, but I can at least talk talk through them. You know, what we saw is about 70, a little over 70% of folks um, have access for executive managers and operations. And then another 22% add, add the reps into that mix for these analytics um, um, features, which I think is just an, an interesting kind of observation. I think what we're seeing with, as we work with a lot of our customers, that number continues to inch up, right, to, to giving more access to that. So, Mike, I wanted to start there just in terms of that uh, around this question, because I know, I know Zoom is giving access very broadly, right? But 
I guess I, 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 I don't, we didn't talk about this one in advance. Like, you know, was that always the case? Was that always kind of part of Zoom's approach or was these, was that kind of an evolution that you went through in terms of how to get the right access to the right people? It was a little bit of an evolution. Um, but, uh, and the reason for that was, uh, as we started to build this process internally, um, we started to get that buy-in and the po- and what we really wanted was, uh, we wanted our reps to see the same things that our managers were seeing. And we wanted our managers to see the same things that our segment leaders, uh, were seeing and sales leaders were seeing so that, um, you know, everyone's driving to the same process, to the same numbers. It's not a surprise if, you know, a manager had a question for you, you can answer it. Everyone's looking at the same thing. So we find a lot of value um, by sharing it to the reps. And, you know, they might not all be getting as deep into the the data and numbers as our managers or um, ops teams and things like that. But um, it does empower them to really identify uh, where their gaps are and where differences or where there's maybe a difference in their trends so that, you know, they can identify what levers they might need to pull in order to help them get to their, their number. We often, that, that that's, that's helpful to understand. We often talk about, you know, even as, even with, within an individual rep, right? It's, it's really about being the CEO or the CRO of your business, right? At a rep level, at a frontline manager level, all the way up to obviously, you know, a, a leadership level, but that level of, of autonomy and control and, and visibility really empowers people to, uh, you know, I think to act in their, in their, in the best interest of the organization and, and to really drive their, their individual relationships forward. Definitely. And, uh, once, once our users start to get comfortable and see that, um, you know, the forca- forecasting doesn't become just an exercise that they feel like they have to do because their managers ask them. Um, it's really, like you said, empowering them to know what they need to do to get to their number if they're not going to get there or really crush it uh, because they can see all the different ways that is making up their their bookings in our case or, um, you know, or uh, how it, how it those contributions uh, factor out. So um, it's been great. Awesome. Well, we've got lots and lots of questions coming in. We're going to try and get through a couple of them here. We had Chris asked a question, which, which uh, Mike, I know you touched on a little bit, but how can Clary be used to understand the top of the funnel? So the pre-opportunity to see what's working, what's driving these opportunities. Um, I know you mentioned looking at lead source, but maybe you could just talk about that a little bit more in terms of how Zoom's doing that. Yeah, we, um, we've we actually set up some dashboards for our managers um, that kind of touch on, on some funnel uh, metrics. And um, we actually, we the way we've structured it is that we've created views that show um, here's how much pipe is coming from each of these sources, inbound, outbound um, channel. And you can start to track them over time by creating these like custom views um, in opportunities and then tagging them to the dashboard. So, um, it's not a perfect science, but it does start to bring visibility so that a rep and a manager, they can start to ask questions with these other teams. And again, by pulling marketing into the mix and channel into the mix, um, everyone's looking at that same data. So it's clear of like where these questions are coming from and they can start to dig in further. Yeah, and we see that as definitely like you know part of the magic of revenue teams coming together, and revenue teams being not only sales teams but marketing as well as post sale teams. So our, our teams mm-hmm. here at Clary, we talk about as our customers for life team, but really being able to then have that shared point of view, right, and that 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 shared um, understanding of everything really really is beneficial. Yeah, Matt was asking a question about um, saying you know Clary's great in quarter. Thank you, Matt, for that. Um, but how is um, how's it being used out quarter, and kind of how is how is Zoom looking at that forecast going forward? Yeah, we do that in a couple different ways. Um, so for that, actually, we didn't touch on it, but Pulse is is really awesome to kind of give us a glimpse into next quarter and future quarters. And uh, the way we like to 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 use Pulse for that purpose is. Um, we toggle that filter to next quarter and we can see how much pipe we're building to that quarter. Um, and we can also then add in filters such as um, age or, you know, we have we have one field in Salesforce of like the number of times these opportunities have been pushed out. So, you know, even though we might have be in, we're tracking to be entering next quarter with a ton of pipe, you know, uh, 
you may have a ton of that being old stale pipe that is just getting kicked down the road. So um, Clary makes it easier for us to identify that. And also, um, you know, if you do have your quota set for future periods, um, Clary does give you that recommendation of how much starting pipeline you need, which is also really helpful for us. Uh, and then the final ways we, we kind of use Clary to look forward is, again, through flow and really understanding the trends of um, how much in-quarter pipe we typically create, how much pipe slippage we usually have. And by taking these trends, you, it's easy to start mapping out how future quarters will look, um, assuming that sort of, you know, those historicals are, are stay true. Awesome. Super, super helpful to understand how Zoom is approaching this. For folks that were asking about the recording, if it's going to be shared afterwards, yes, absolutely. We'll, we'll share this out so you can take notes. Don't feel like you have to jot down everything in, in real time. And then, of course, our teams here at Clary are always available to answer follow-up questions and dive into, into more detail. Mike, I think we can probably squeeze in one or two more questions here um, just, to, just to make the best use of everyone's time. Um, Dana is asking a question about tracking deals that are in and out in forecast or out of forecast? And and I know you mentioned talking about the commits and things like that, but I wonder if you could touch on how uh, how you're approaching that at Zoom. Yeah, so we have a, a field, I, I believe it's native in Salesforce, it's the forecast category. So um, those are getting mapped based on kind of what stages those, oper those deals live in, but also we give um, our reps the ability to overwrite that manually so that, um, you know, uh, if, if a deal is maybe in stage six, which for us is sort of our last stage before closing, it might not be a slam dunk because, you know, if it's at the end of the quarter, there could be an instance where um, the customer just can't get it through their, you know, their, uh, their buying process. So um, by using, by looking at those forecast categories really helps us understand at a deal level what's going to close for the quarter and what's not. And having that as a filter in each of our analytics really helps us break it, break down what's happening to those deals. Um, do we have a lot of deals that are in commit that ultimately don't close? Um, we can see that in flow. We can see that in waterfall. And all of a sudden we can start to ask those questions and understand, uh, you know, why a team isn't closing them the way that they should be. Awesome. Um, I think there were there were a couple of technical questions in here in terms of where is the data coming from, in terms of, of is it coming from Salesforce? I can answer that quickly. So, you know, obviously a, a lot of the data comes from Salesforce, right? Everything from our auto capture, right? Pulling details in from um, augmenting that data basically within Salesforce and then letting reps also just enter that directly. So my, uh, Mike, I don't know if you want to touch it all in terms of um, you know, how the reps are actually using Clary to, to augment that data as well and, and keep that, keep that fresh. Yeah. Um, the beauty of, of Clary. And I think what appeals to a lot of our reps is that you can make changes to your, to your deals within Clary. Um, there's that two way, um, talking, which, which really makes things a lot easier, but, um, yeah, a lot of the data that, that Clary is pulling is just sourced directly from Salesforce. Um, and again, it just makes it really easy that you can make changes in, in either place and it's going to uh, show up live there. Yeah. And in, we didn't get into it in detail, obviously, in, in this webinar today, but for folks that want to learn more about this, we have a lot of resources available on the website um, and through other, other webinars that we've done that talk about how we use the insights and, and the activity detail from many different partners, many different integrations that we have to where as a frontline manager, as individual rep, as a sales leader, you can really look at and inspect for any given deal, what are the activities that are happening? And all of that then is used to really fuel the insights engine so that we can provide some of the predictability and some of the scoring that's available. I know we are just about at time here um, and I want to just uh, be respectful of everyone's, everyone's time. Thank you, Mike, so much for sharing just some of the best practices in terms of how Zoom is using Clary. We, we really appreciate you being a, a customer of ours um, and just the continued insight uh, that, that you provide and the feedback. Going back to the, the slide that I shared earlier in terms of you know how we, from a product perspective, continue to evolve, continue to innovate quarter over quarter. It's the great feedback that you know folks like Mike and his team are, are providing um, so we can continue to build out the great functionality. Um, for folks that have attended today, thank you for, for, for attending live. Really appreciate it. 
Um, and if there's any questions, like I said, please follow up with your Clary account teams. We'll be happy to to discuss. Mike, any closing thoughts from uh, from your side? No, just so appreciative. Thank you for having me, Bobby. And uh, for for those of you watching and joining, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Always happy to to chat and, and uh, talk shop. So thank you again, Bobby. Thank you, Clary. And looking forward to all the new features. So. All right. Thanks all. Take care.